God's love. Oh, we are remembering the Savior's dying love. Oh, we are remembering the promise of God's love. And we know that we will never be alone. To the years and to the wonder, we will never be alone. To the tears and through the laughter, God is here with us. We are remembering the promise of God's love. Whoa, we are remembering the Savior's dying love. Whoa, we are remembering the promise of God's love. And we know that we will never be alone. Through the fear and through the silence, we will never be alone. Through the life and through the dying, God is here with us. We are remembering the promise of God's love. Whoa, we are remembering the Savior's dying love. Whoa, we are remembering the promise of God's love. And we know the word and through the water, we will never be alone. Through the cross and the risen Savior, God is here with us. We are remembering the promise of God's love. Oh, we are remembering the Savior And we know that we will never be alone. <clears throat> In a world full of broken hearts, Crying out, O oh light, on a day that feels oh so dark, we all need some light. I want you to know we will remember the seeds of love you have sown. I want you to know. We will remember, we will remember. There's a part of us that is gone. Nothing can replace. I have hope we will live as one through the same. seeds of love you have sown. I want you to know we will remember, we will remember. Your love will be with us everywhere we go. We will feel your presence stirring in our soul. I want you to know we will remember. The seeds of love you have sown, I want you to know, we will remember, we will remember.
I can just, I just get closer. journey there for the last time Jerusalem were you still so blind he was the message of truth but you just would not believe so you hung him on a He journeyed there for the last time. Jerusalem could not see the sign. He brought you healing and life, but you just turned him away and you screamed out, Crucify. He was weeping over Jerusalem. He was crying, tears were running down his face. He was weeping over Jerusalem because they could not see God's grace. He journeys to us every day. Jerusalem, do we walk your way? He wants to give us new life, but do we turn him away? And do we scream, crucify? He was weeping over Jerusalem. He was crying, tears were running down his face. He was weeping over Jerusalem because they could not see God's grace. Because they could not see God's grace. Good morning. What a wonderful morning it is with the sun shining a little bit. And it's not snowing. This is cause to give thanks. Let us uh, begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who is greater than the most powerful forces in this world, enable us to be still and know that you are God. O Lord, who answers out of the whirlwind of everyday life, Breathe in us your Holy Spirit to strengthen, comfort, and guide us in the midst of the storm. O oh, still small voice, speak to us this hour that we might become makers of your peace in our homes, in our communities, in our world. We pray all this in the name of the one who calmed the raging sea. Amen. Will you please join in singing number 301 in the green book, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain.
We gather because we, we gather because God brought us here. We meet because Jesus sets the table. We worship because the Holy Spirit gives life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we wander, we run away, we think we can do things our own way, but we end up in messes of our own making and problems we can't solve. Find us when we are stuck, in a pit of despair or on a boat to nowhere. Reveal our faults and forgive our sins. Send us back out with words and actions to help the world that you love so much. None of us can flee from the love of God, not in the heights of heaven or in the pit of grief and loss. God will always find us with love and beckon us home. So hear the words that each of us need. We are loved beyond all knowing. We are forgiven in the name of Jesus. We are free. We are unfinished. We are beloved. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of creation and compassion, moments of disruption frequently offer us a glimpse into who you are and who we are. Grant us courage in the maelstrom to cling tightly to you and to know that your grip on us never breaks. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalms 107, 1 through 3, and 23 through 32. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say no, those he redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down in the sea ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heaven, they went down in the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Our reading is from Jonah 1, verses 4 through 15. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it up for them. Jonah. Meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing, sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us the thoughts so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on those who count this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you? 
that the sea may quiet down for us, for the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon us. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood for you. O Lord, have done as it has pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Here ends our readings. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Could I have the children who are here come up and help me tell the story? First come, first serve here. You get to be the... You ready? Okay. Then, come on up. You can, you know how to work those, right? Here you go, honey. You know how to do that, right? Make it. There you go. There you go. Who else? Anybody else? Okay, so when we talk about the storm, I want you to make storm noises. And Miranda, you know what? If you just kick that a little bit, it's going to make noises. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Now, when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm rose on the sea. Let's hear a windstorm. So great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus was asleep. And they went down and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Let's hear the storm. Okay. And he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then Jesus got up, let's hear the storm, and he rebuked the winds of the sea, and there was dead calm. And the people were amazed, 
and said, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. You guys did a great job. You all can be seated, but we have one more thing that I need you to help me with. Okay, so who was afraid? You can put them down. Perfect. Who was afraid? In that story, who was afraid? You were afraid? Yeah, we've been afraid before. It was the, it was the disciples who were in the boat with Jesus. They were afraid. What are some things that you're afraid of? Are you afraid of spiders? Lots of people are afraid of spiders. I would be afraid if I got bit by a spider, absolutely. What about you guys? You're afraid of the dark? I am too, kind of. Yeah. You're, oh, you're afraid of heights? Me too, big time. What's the tallest ladder that you can climb up on? Really? That's not afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? What are you guys afraid of? Same as Joanne. Okay. All right. That's okay. So we're going we're gonna to try this thing here. See this plastic cup? We're going to say that that's you. Okay? This is, this is all of us. Everybody is this plastic cup right here. Got it? Now, Piper, can you come and help me? This right in here? This is everything that everybody ever has been afraid of, okay? Well, it's just not quite water. Can you pour that in there for me? Could you? Okay, thank you. Right here. Oh, that's okay. All the whole thing. I'll dump all of it in there. Thank you very much. Miranda, could you come and help me? Okay, and then I need one more person. Okay, so this is baking soda. This baking soda is, um, well, no, all of this is right here. This is, this is you. This is the fears. See, look at that. There's a lot in there, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, these are the fears. Now, hold on, don't, don't yet, don't go yet. And this is, this is Jesus, okay? This symbolizes Jesus. All right, now you have to be ready, okay? You have to be as quick as Jesus would be, I know it's kind of sticky, isn't it? I've got, I've got it. Okay, go ahead, Miranda, put that in there. Oh, 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 what's the wall? Look at that. Okay, look at all those fears. They're bubbling over and we're feeling so bad. And look, Jesus comes and what happened? It went down. It calmed down, didn't it? Yeah. And you don't look the same anymore, do you? You don't. You look a little bit different now. Isn't that how it works when Jesus calms our fears? Things aren't the same anymore. Spiders aren't quite as scary, and the dark isn't quite as dark as it used to be, and all of our fears, mm, they just kind of melt away. And we look different because Jesus has given us comfort and peace and calm. Thanks, you guys. Let's say a prayer, okay? You could just put those right on the floor. That's awesome. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being in our hearts, and thank you for reminding us that even when you're afraid, that you are right there with us, and you will help calm all of our fears and help us to look different, to look peaceful, and help us to spread that peace to all the people. We pray this in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, awesome. You guys are great. Thank you very much. There's candy right there. Okay. Did you need a paper towel for your fingers? Okay. Oh, what did I do with my book? There it is. Excuse me for a second, Maya. Thank you. We hear in Jonah a storm, a storm of that God hurls a great wind to the sea, and the sailors are afraid, and the captain tries to wait, has to go down and wake up Jonah because he fell asleep. 
Generally, when you fall asleep someplace, it's because you have a sense of peace, some sort of calm in your heart, or you're just so exhausted you can't stay awake anymore. <clears throat> Maybe we've experienced both of those things. But Jonah slept through the storm, just like Jesus slept through the storm, but I think they were in completely different kinds of states of mind, don't you? Jesus was calm because Jesus is the Lord. Jonah probably exhausted because he knew he was running away from God. He had all of the travel, uh, tired from the travel. He was weighed down with guilt for not trusting God, I assume, I hope. That's a conscience that we have working on us. But in both cases, there was fear. And isn't that normal? I, um, I generally don't like riding, dry, I, I generally don't like boats. I've gotten a lot better. But I remember one time we were out on a boat and a storm was coming in, and it was coming in a lot faster than I thought it should be coming in, and we were not moving as fast as I thought we should be moving. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. We made it. It was fine. We got the boat where it belonged, and we were on dry land, and all of a sudden there was, there was this storm. It was crazy. I wasn't even on the water in this storm, and I was still afraid. We've all been in situations where we have been afraid that the circumstances that we're in have been out of our control, and that's when we start to fear. When we don't have control over our surroundings, over our, um, who, where we are, who we're with, those kinds of things, that's when we get afraid. And that's what the sailors and the disciples were experiencing, that kind of fear. They didn't bring this on themselves. A storm is a storm. They happen. And the storm in, in uh, the story in Matthew, it's more like, um, like an earthquake kind of storm where the ground under, the, where the sea itself is quaking and then the waves start billowing and everything is out of control. Ooh, do we know what that feels like? It's a disruption, a storm. Maybe our storms don't look like um, storms at sea. Maybe our storms look more like, how are we going to pay the next bill? Or how maybe, they feel, maybe our storms are like, why is our best friend sick? Or maybe our storms look like family disruptions and, and death and all of the things that come with life. What happens when our life is disrupted, when we, have when we have storms we have to live through, things are exposed, aren't they? In the story of Jonah, fear was exposed Jonah's guilt was exposed to his friends, to, his, to the sailors he was sailing with. God's power was exposed because as soon as the sailors threw, the, threw Jonah into the sea, the storm stopped. God's power was exposed and grace was exposed because God didn't let Jonah drown. He saved him in the most obscure and absurd and crazy way we've ever heard of. And the sailors, once they, have been, once they had been calmed, once the sea had been calmed and the sailors were no longer afraid, they worshipped God. They worshipped the Lord, the Lord they didn't even know. They were more faithful to God than Jonah was. A God that Jonah knew. In the story in Matthew, Jesus says that the disciples 
little faith was exposed. They had committed to follow him anywhere and everywhere. And he was, Jesus was starting his ministry in Capernaum and all of the traveling that he did and the disciples were, yep, here we go, we're going to do whatever Jesus tells us to do and it'll be great. And I am not afraid <laughs> until we are. <laughs> we're sitting in the boat and we can't find Jesus and here he is asleep. And don't you get mad when you're in the middle of your storm and everything seems like it's going to break just break up, and you can't find Jesus? And you're afraid? And it feels like Jesus is sleeping somewhere, not taking care of you. Hmm. And then they find Jesus sleeping in the boat not too far away from where they are, experiencing the storm with them, just like Jesus experiences your storm and your disruptions with you, even if we can't seem to think, even if we feel like he's sleeping. And what is exposed there, Jesus says, is our little faith. I was thinking about the word little. In this, in this context, in, in, in Matthew's story, we seem to think that little means just a t a, an amount, that we have this little amount of faith. But what if little meant um, vulnerable? I mean, when we have, we, have our little, we have our little faithful ones who come up and help me do things to tell us the story. They're little. There are little brothers and sisters in Christ. And is it possible that their faith can be stronger than ours? Us older people, us adults. And maybe we have bigger storms and bigger disruptions. Storms and disruptions that we try to hide from the littles in our lives knowing that they, have, that they are little, but their faith is big. And Jesus says to his disciples, and he says to us in the midst of our storms and in our disruptions, oh, you have little faith. Little faith, vulnerable faith. Do you not know that I care for you, that I love you, that I would save you? And then Jesus says to the storm, be still. And the waves stop waving. And the ground stops moving. And the winds calm down. And it's quiet. Not just quiet, but dead quiet. There's no noise. Nothing. And they look at Jesus and they say, who is this? And Jesus' power is exposed. Who Jesus is, his identity is exposed. Jesus has the power to stop chaos, the power to disrupt your storm, to disrupt your disruption. Because we can go out today or tomorrow or whenever the next snowfall is and say, stop snowing. And have we, all winter, this past month, March, completely stopped snowing? And we don't have the power to do that, because you know what? I can say that, but it's going to keep snowing. It's going to keep blowing. It's going to keep building up the ice. And yes, dear. We should, maybe that would help. Please stop snowing. I think, I think I said a prayer about that. Please stop snowing. God, make the snow stop. Good job. But we don't have that kind of power. There we are 
in the middle of our storm, in the middle of our disruption, and we want it to stop, and maybe we even say please, and we pray, and we ask people to help us, and, and they do as best as people can, but we don't have the power to make it stop. What we do have is the power to say to Jesus, help me, please help me. Please walk with me in this storm, in this disruption. And maybe as you get through that, however you get through it, you're not going to look the same. Our snow is going to melt and things aren't going to look the same. Maybe the, maybe the rivers and the streams and the lakes will fill up, and that's awesome. Maybe the fields will be fed with all of the nutrition and the moisture that they need, and that will be awesome. Maybe there will be a flood, and that won't be so awesome. But we won't look the same no matter what. When we're at the end of our disruption, at the end of our chaos, and at the end of our storm, we can take that nice big deep breath and we can hear Jesus calm everything around us. And it may be a long time coming because if your disruption has to do with grief, ugh. It feels like there's no end. There is no end to the disruption. disruption. But you can know that because Jesus has promised that he will be with us to the end of time, that you do not walk alone. <clears throat> Even if it feels like maybe Jesus is sleeping, you can know that Jesus is with you. You can know because you have faith, even if it's little faith, vulnerable faith. You have it because it is your gift. It is the gift that has been given to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is pure gift and it is yours. And when you need something to hold on to, Hold on to that. Jesus loves you no matter what. Amen. Lord, take my hand, lead me 
<clears throat> I invite you to stand as you are able. We will profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Will you please share a word of peace with each other? You may be seated whenever you're ready, and we will receive our offering at this time. And if the children who are here would like to come up and share their offering with the kids in Haiti, they're welcome to do so now. Our offering song is What Have We to Offer, page 13 in the Servant Songbook.
Let us pray. Generous God, we offer ourselves to you, unfinished as we are, to serve as you direct us. Accept us and these our humble gifts for your work in the world. Amen. Eternal God, you have been our resting place through the ages. Generations come and pass away, but you abide forever. We praise you for your presence among us. You bring us comfort amid our storms, clarity when confusion, confusion persists, peace in the midst of conflict, and hope of eternal life. Hear us now as we pray for your church and the needs of the world, for you are the God of our lives. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for the Church of Jesus Christ, that begun, maintained, and promoted by the Holy Spirit, it may be true, engaging, glad, and active, doing your will. Let your Church be always faithful, O God, and ready to promote the cause of compassionate love and peace. Lord, in your prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray that everywhere upon this earth there may be justice and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray especially today for the well-being of people in parts of the world affected by war and corruption. We continue to pray for peace around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. Lord, we pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We name before you individuals and families experiencing personal hardship or facing an uncertain truth, those who are separated from loved ones, those who grieve this today, and those who are sick in hospital or ill at home. Hear us, Lord, as we now lift up these people and those situations you have placed upon our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Lord, in your love, hear all our prayers, both the spoken and the unsaid. May our prayers further your purpose for us all and bring us to that place where we may experience the joy that has been given to your faithful down through the ages, a joy everlasting. Amen. We are one family gathered through Jesus Christ. Let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. You are invited and encouraged to please stay for fellowship time this morning after worship. Um, the kids uh, are, will practice the choir up here. Grab your snacks and treats and then come and sing. Um, Kids Connecting Through Christ meets this Wednesday afternoon at 3.15. Faith Formation meets this uh, afterwards at 3.45. Our Lent Supper on Wednesday is at 5.30, followed by worship at 6.30. Um, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week, which means Easter is just two weeks away. Two weeks from today. Two weeks. I know. One of the best Sundays ever. Um, if you would like to donate some flowers, some Easter lilies, or, um, you know, plants for the church to help sec de decorate the sanctuary, um, you can order from, from Susie, and she will deliver them right here so you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, you can bring in the plants that you want. 
um, if you're out shopping. <clears throat> and if you would like to have the plant or the flower <clears throat> listed in honor of or in memory of someone, the forms are on the cupboard. <clears throat> Uh, next Sunday then, because it's Palm Sunday and it is our tradition that uh, we do our first communion class on Palm Sunday, youth in fifth grade or if we have older children who haven't been through first communion class yet, they're welcome to join. We will have it right after Sunday school. Um, parents and grandparents and whoever is around are welcome to come and participate. <clears throat> Uh, and then the kids will have their first communion and worship on Monday, Thursday. We met our goal. I'm so excited. Uh, we have met our Synod Pledge. And I, that is reason to celebrate. So, And it's only March. Nice. Thank you. I would ask that you would please keep in your prayers Laurel Hansen. She's had some medical um, testing over the last week, and they have found five more uh, cancer tumors in her brain. So if you could, so you know, it's the metastasized stuff, and she'll receive treatment. And but it's hard news. So if you could please keep her in your prayers, and then if you could also please keep Nina Dahlberg and her family in your prayers. Her brother Robert died yesterday after a very difficult hospitalization. So, um, We have many of our friends and our acquaintances and our brothers and sisters in Christ in this community who are, who are struggling um, with their health. I would ask that you would please keep all of, all of them in your prayers. Even if you don't know who they are, pray for God's will to be done and health to be renewed. <clears throat> Are there any other announcements for the congregation? Elaine, Elaine Bapp, thank you. Yes, Elaine Bapp uh, suffered another stroke over this week. Um, she is home, and I talked to Jennifer, her, her granddaughter, a couple of days ago. Maybe it was yesterday, I don't know. She is weak, um, but she is at home. And uh, people are, Jenny's checking on her and, and keeping track of things, but she needs prayers, please, for safety and for um, strength. Yes? A couple of little birdies told me that it's busy at the birthday tomorrow. Is it? <laughs> it's Susan Getty's birthday tomorrow. Well, we need to sing happy birthday to Susan, don't you think? We'll end with, may Jesus bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Susan. May Jesus bless you. You're welcome. Yay. Stay for, stay for coffee and we'll all, we'll, it'll be great. Now, may the God of justice bless us. May Christ, the Lamb of God, live among us. May the Holy Spirit of God bring peace to our hearts and lives. Amen. Will you please stand, and we will sing our sending song, number 26, in the Servant Songbook. Someone shouting from the desert, someone shouting from the sea, someone shouting from the mountain, someone shouting from the valley, Messiah, come and be our Shouting from the city, I am young, I am old. Someone 
shouting I am broken someone shouting make me whole someone shouting come and change me someone shouting save my soul Go in peace. Jesus loves you. Thanks be to God. Thanks, you guys. That was fun. Uh-oh, turn it on. Oh, yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Turn that off. Okay. Oh, I didn't stop the recording. Hmm. <laughs>